Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm super excited to be here as always. I had a friend who reached out to me a couple of weeks ago, as I told you in my last segment, I think, and she was really frantic. Her OPT period was expiring, she hadn't gotten any H1 sponsor, and <laughs> it felt like the world was going to end on her head, and that gave me an idea. I wondered how many people are in the same situation and who feel the same way. So I'm going to be doing everyone a favor, including myself, right? I'm going to be giving you five things you can do as next steps if your H1B, if your OPT period is expiring, you don't have any H1B sponsorship, right? You want to stay till the last tip because I give a bonus tip of, you know, one. You know, I always like to give the extra thing at the end because I want to know who stays till the end. Before we go into all the next steps you can take if your OPT period is expiring and you have no H1B sponsors, I want to say something first. You don't have to leave the country immediately your OPT time is expired. I believe you have a 60 day grace period within which you can figure out your next moves. So let's do away with that need or that fallacy that oh immediately your OPT time is expired or oh, you need to pack your bags and leave. You have a 60 day period. I am emphasizing it because 60 days is two months. On the other hand i would say you don't want to wait until that 60 day period to figure out your next steps right so here are the practical tips that i have for you so first things first i think you can enroll for a phd program and i know that's like oh my god it's my phd after my master's there are folks who are open to that option who have always wanted to further their education and so it's a wonderful thing to do one thing i would say about the phd program is that it gives you the extra opt period so remember you get one year OPT if this is law related or for non-STEM courses, you get one year OPT per educational level. So if you move on to a PhD program, you likely will get another OPT period, which is a period for you to work full time. So that's a big advantage of it. The disadvantage for me, in my own opinion, is that a PhD only gives you more time. It does not necessarily change your situation other than gives you other than it gives you more time and don't get me wrong that might be what you just need more time more time to try the h1b lottery again more time to figure out what your next moves are but being in school the phd process we all know it can be tiring right the phd is three to five years and you could actually get a scholarship i know a lot of folks who get phd scholarship so if this is an option that you're thinking of start early right no one applies for a phd within the 60 months the 60 um, day period start early you need to write your proposals and stuff like that but if a phd is not an option for you and you're like ijama please move on <laughs> then yeah that's what i'll do i'll move on <laughs> next thing i would suggest you can do and and this is still academic and i feel like you're going to hate me for this is I know folks who after the master's program did the OPT and then went back to school for a JD. And here's why I think that is smart, right? You will find out in subsequent episodes that I talk about this dichotomy I noticed between JD students and LLM students. In a lot of job descriptions that I saw back then, it's way better now. But there was once upon a time where in job descriptions, what you will see is that we are looking for a JD student and that is to the exclusion of LLM students. A lot of times not all the time right there was this preference for JD students over the LLM students in my own time I don't know what the case is now perhaps it's still the case one thing I would say is that going back to school if you uh, your OPT is expiring you want to go back to school and you feel like a JD I would actually say a JD is not a bad option right it's two to a JD is typically three years if you have your master's, perhaps you can transfer your credit and it's two years or it's one and a half. Um, one thing I would say is that the disadvantage of going the JD route is it's expensive. A JD is, is crazy expensive in the United States, right? Um, and so you need to think, you really need to think about that option. If you have the money, I feel like, okay, it's a really good investment. Another advantage that JD would give you is that you have more time to get internships right one thing that i noticed in the difference between jds and llms is that the jds come out more prepared because they've been in school for three years 
they have had multiple job experiences while they were in school while LM students to a large extent do not have the opportunity to actually intern they come out from school fresh and they are looking for a job right they have no work experience right so what the JD will give you that two-year period perhaps you could get CPT authorization and you could intern but I would be honest this is expensive but it could be a worthwhile investment that helps you in the long run now I have to be clear I also don't know if um, doing going back to do a JD would give you an extra OT period. There's a lot of conflicting opinion about it. Some folks believe um, it might not. Right? One thing I can do or one thing I can advise is that you speak to your advisor. If you speak to your advisor, your advisor will let you know if after you've done a master's period, done your OPT, um, and then you're going back to school for a JD, if you get the one if you get a, a, an OPT period for that educational level. Next thing I can advise is that you can enroll in a community college. There are a lot of community colleges in the United States of America. You can enroll in a community college that you know helps you just maintain your status as an F1 student. And during that period, you can then be trying to um, find an H1B sponsor, right? That keeps you in status so that an employer is able to help you. Now at the community college, you don't have to do a new degree. You can take certificate courses rather than a degree course right and that is more affordable you typically find for affordable community colleges you'll be able to pay three to four thousand dollars per quarter um and that is a way to just maintain your status and take new classes while you're looking for an h1b sponsor right so this is one way where you can use to buy time i'm not so sure if you'll be able to get an opt period from going to a community college and taking a certificate certificate course most likely not but as i said what this gives you is the time to figure out your next steps have you tried applying for international jobs have you tried to look outside of the us i can't say this enough so that you know that this is actually an option for you and you don't box yourself here in the us right so if you are at that stage if you're for me i feel like don't wait till the 60 day period i only told you that you have that 60 day grace period so that you don't you know lose it but if you feel like you're getting close and it feels like you haven't gotten a sponsor you can start applying for international opportunities there are firms internationally that will take you um with your u.s certification one thing i will also say which i feel like is my fifth point at this point <laughs> Fifth point at this point, that's so funny. Um, but my fifth point is so you can move to another country, perhaps Canada. I would also pr provide links to pages that help LLM students in Canada, right? Um, and so I feel like that's a, 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 an option for you. You can move to a country that has um, immigration policies that support your academic route right so if you move to canada it seems like it's better it seems like there are more opportunities uh, and, and and a more sustainable immigration path than in the u.s so that's something you can obviously consider now to my bonus point and if you're here thank you for staying to the end of the segment now my bonus tip is something that i feel like people don't talk enough of especially in the llm space they talk about it more for maybe the stem students but have you something you can think about is applying for a green card on the basis of a national interest waiver and that does not require an employer you're you're petitioning straight to the uscis for a green card on the basis of the fact that you have done work in the u.s that positions you right you have done work in the u.s that is in the interest of the u.s that's in the national interest of the government <laughs> sorry my bad right this is not my area of expertise like immigration is not my thing i just need to emphasize that at this point right one thing you can do is ask questions about the national interest waiver i'm going to do a segment at some point that is dedicated to it but a summary is that what you're trying to establish at this point is that you being in the u.s is of the national interest to the u.s you being of the in the u.s is going to be beneficial to the u.s so typically what you want to show is that um, you have letter of recommendations like folks who recommend you who can speak to the fact that you have done good work in the u.s and on that basis the government should give you uh, a, a green card on the basis of a national interest waiver right this 
it's not my area of expertise but i have heard of people that this has worked for and i know you're thinking but ij i'm not that exceptional or i'm not speak to an attorney you would find out that the requirements are not as crazy and that by having an advanced degree in addition to some of the other extra things you can start doing now as a master's student like building relationships volunteering like doing some particular work that could position you to get um, a national interest waiver right i won't lie it's not the easiest bar to meet right it's not like everybody can just apply for a national interest waiver because if everybody could then everybody would be doing it but i would say it's something for you to consider hey before you leave i would like to hear your thoughts on what resources you would like to see on this channel we are clocking 100 subscribers soon and that means there are 100 people who feel like this is important and that's important to me at this point right so i would like to know either in the comics comment section or you could send me a private message on linkedin what would you like to see on this channel please don't forget to, to subscribe don't forget to like don't forget to comment don't forget to share this people need to know LLM students need to know prospective LLM students need to know as well so have a wonderful one bye